Good morning, guys and girls. Uh, the frustrations building up um, with not being able to fish, I'm sure, for everybody. But again, I want to say thank you for all the anglers that's adhering to the lockdown and not slipping out to try and fish. There are big fines. Uh, I actually saw the list of fines yesterday. In some areas, it's really high. If they catch you outside for, for not an emergency or essential goods, um, obviously we can all classify fishing as essential, but that's just that uh, that's uh, going to be a challenge. But guys, yes, um, today I'm just going to run through. Did an interview with four anglers yesterday um, afternoon, and I'm just doing the trace demos that will go with that interview, and it will be obviously it's on our channel as you can see. But uh, this is a Halyun trace as this Halyun season just started the 1st of March and a lot of people running from Transkai all the way through to Cape Town and Western Cape Namibia. That is definitely one of the target species and um, yes I want to ask guys again please be considerate don't try and keep your full limit if you're not gonna use them keep one because they are very slow growing fish for you. For those of you that don't know it is our national fish. And it's a resident fish so it stays in that vicinity and area and uh, yes they're very slow growing uh, under correction I think a five kilo whole unit is probably close to 80 years old so keep that in mind um, when you before you keep one I know they're very tasty um, I've only had them ever once in my life and they weren't too tasty it was in Transkai when it was cold I came late for the for the dinner and they had one and it wasn't really tasty at all so I haven't acquired the taste yet but I believe a lot of people do like them uh, with that unique taste and and the veins that's very predominant in the meat but more importantly this species is a fantastic fighter a really strong fish we find it in foamy working water close to rocks a lot of times and some areas on uh, in sandy areas you catch them as well they obviously feed on crustaceans um, mollusks so any white muscle blood worms red bait that's mussels that's uh, the preferred bait you'll use when you target them white muscle easier to get sometimes so one of the very popular baits and if you take out red bait guys remember any bait collecting you still need to get the additional permit it's not your fishing permit additional bait collecting permit from the post office so remember to do that Okay, so we're going to run through a trace quickly and uh, I'm going to show a couple of options. Unfortunately, my smallest ring sway I've got is a 3.0. They are, in general, a smaller hook. So, yes, I would throw a 3.0, but 2.0, 1.0. I would definitely make this trace with a 1.0 ring sway, must add. Then for my hook snoot material, for going to your hook, I'm using 0.55. Uh, the Siglon fluorocarbon and the reason I do this is a nice stiff line obviously you guys all know a bit about fluorocarbon um, its density allows it to be less visible in the water less reflection it's got the same density as water so it kind of disappears in the water this is a, a proper fluorocarbon so it's nice and stiff it adds to a bit of a stiff rig but allows still enough movement um, with your bait in the water in any case fishing and working water so there's a lot of movement there now floats uh, when it comes to hull yun you can choose yes a float no a float um, you don't have to use floats a lot of times when the water is really churning up the float assists with attraction visual attraction as well and catches its eye and it might grab your bait quicker it obviously feeds on smell there uh, but also still on visual on the visual side of things and then I've got a bit of um, Kingfisher fluorocarbon the 0.40 this is 0.55 which is 38 pounds 17 kilograms and this is much lighter 24 pounds 11 kilos this I use for my sinker line all right um, always go much thinner you can even use a 5.0 as long as it's thinner than your hook snoot and when you use a 5.0 you make a knot in it just a straight surgeon's knot that you'll do like that and you pull it very tight now that makes a weak spot on the sinker line so if you get stuck the whole thing you hook this fish it's in between reefs they run straight into the rocks your sinker gets stuck so you want that to break off all right guys without further ado i'm using the five six combi swivels from power swivel i like that now there's there's uh, you know when you really want to go finesse and the water's clean you don't use a swivel i'll show you guys that knot at the end if you want 
and then the quarter safe zone anti-tangle sleeves it just helps uh, keeping that rig nice and stiff your bait out away from your main line and from your sinker line that's why we use those and again you don't have to use those when you go finesse all right um I'll show you guys quickly all right just for the hook snoot very simple we're going to cut off I'm going to cut off for trace purpose and not purpose 20 centimeters I'm going to grab a hook and your challenge you can fish them on circle hooks I know Emil Bates one of our ambassadors in Cape Town he fishes them on circle hooks uh, and with with good success I haven't really uh, been that successful the one or two times I've tried bronze beam call you know those with with circle hooks so I'm still on the joke which I enjoy um, they're not a fish that, that really swallows, like I said, uh, swallows the bait, so you don't gut hook them often. Okay, remember, that's a figure of eight. Remember to lubricate it before you pull, especially ferrocarbon. It just makes much better not. Now, what's nice, you'll find a lot of ferrocarbons, or I would say almost mixtures. <laughs> uh, when you find ferrocarbon, it's very flexible and soft. I kind of question sometimes the material in there, if it's fluorocarbon or it's a combination of monofilament. Now, a lot of those lines don't make great knots. Okay, guys, so that's very simple. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, use a float, you're gonna stick the float down on that. Very similar to a bronze beam trace, nice and short. And then for your float, okay, you just use a toothpick Stick it next to your line there, in there, and you stick it, you, you put quite a bit of pressure on that to get it in nice and deep. You see it's not quite in, and then I just use my teeth to push it in completely. So you can't, it disappears completely, which makes it very tight on you, because they do move around with those fish. You can't believe how hard those fish actually hit the bait. Uh, all right, and then using your uh, combi swivel that will face to your leader the bigger eye of the main swivel will go to your leader line and the bottom part will go to your hook so you'll be fishing it like that and then the smaller swivel to your sinker line all right and then i'm, I'm going to use oh you almost forgot put the anti-tangle if you want it you want to use the anti-tangle okay stick that on so long and then tie it to the bottom the smaller eye of the main swivel on your combi swivel and again a figure of eight okay lubricate that move it down to the swivel now a lot of times you see this is nice and short this is like you would fish for bronze bream in any case you can vary this up to 30 centimeters depending on how you want to fish it um, that will allow more movement uh, because we're using the sinker this will wash around another little bit of uh, advice i would uh, give guys what i do is i try and go a little bit lighter you know if i if i throw five arms and i feel i'm lying dead still i'm not moving then i'll go to a four go to a three until i feel my lines moving a bit because a lot of times you know, around the rocks where those fish are feeding, the sand uh, digs out, it washes out. So this little gut is where it goes in. And that's where all your food will congregate in any case, anything that's washing around loose. So logically, that's where your fish are going to feed. So if you've got a lighter sinker that will wash into those little gutters and gullies next to the rocks, and that's where the fish sit. A lot of times they sit under a rock as well, uh, your types of fish at ambush. So it will wash nicely in under the um, just one hook, I would fish this, especially when it's close to reef, because you're not fishing a circle hook, you will get stuck. All right. And then this anti-tangle, basically, you're going to wedge it, pull it hard, and wedge it over the swivel. Okay. And now what it does, going to your main line, it keeps that, you see, it keeps it away from your sinker line and from your main line. And now, obviously, in the water washing, and this can turn around. Okay. And then for the sinker line, 4-0. Now there's two ways of making sure this, this can break off when it gets stuck. Um, using a very light one like I do. Or you can use a fiver with a knot I told you. Or you can use a rubber band. 
that's very old school. In the olden days, a lot of guys used to either use a bit of rope or, you know, a weak rope, strong enough to cast a sinkum, but um, soft enough to break before your hook snoot breaks. And that I'll lift up. Now, why I do this, why I make my, my, my hook snoot shorter than my sinker, is you want it up there. You know, when you're casting it between the rocks and they're the same length, that's going to be the limit of where this bait can go. It can go up there. Now, these fish, a lot of them, they're not necessarily just feeding on the floor with stuff. Everything washes around those rocks, so they're quite high up. And a lot of times they're feeding off the rocks, which is fairly high up. So you can monitor that and you can vary the length of your sinker line accordingly. Now, two things. Because your line is much thinner, all right, and you're fishing in between rocks, um, I use a loop here, all right, just a simple loop, double surgeon. Okay, so you wiggle it through twice, it actually forms a figure of eight. Okay. And you're going to cut your tag. And now, if you don't have a rubber band with you, there's two purposes, two, two reasons I would use a rubber band. First one is it will allow it to break off when you get stuck. And the other one is with these sinkers, you see this wire here, lovely sinkers to use in between the rocks. But because you're, you're dragging it over rocks, through rocks, depending on where you fish, if you're fishing off ledges, this hits, and when the line is between the rock and the steel, it damages the line. A lot of times you'll reel it, whoop, and there your sink is off. Because this line is thin, it breaks off quite easily, like that, when it hits the rocks. So what you're going to do is a loop-to-loop -loop with a rubber band. <laughs> Do the loop to loop, okay, like that, pull it tight, and then you put the loop of the rubber band. Now that will prevent it from breaking off uh, by just reeling it over rocks, but it will allow it to break off when you get stuck. All right, so it's a great little method for that. Okay, and that's your, your whole yun trace. Okay, very simple, very close to a bronze bream, just using a bigger hook. You'll use a 1 0 up to a 2 0. Uh, of the the ring soy, the tuna, ah, uh, the mustard hooks. This is a 3 -o, still nice and small, um, which you can still use, and uh, in between get a cobby. <laughs> but the small hook will also catch the cob. Smaller hooks catch bigger fish. Big hooks, you struggle to catch smaller fish. So adapt your hook to, to the species you're going to target. Now, guys, I just want to show you one more. Like I said, a more finesse trait. All right. So they've got teeth, all right. Human-like, horse-like teeth. <laughs> and uh, going to a very thin line could end up problematic. And they can after a while bite you off, especially if you hook a big one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a very kind of finesse trace. This you can adapt down to 5-0. I won't go on the hook snoot less than 5-0. And I'm going to, for the purpose of the demonstration, because you're using a rubber band, take that. Forget the oil. So, what I want to do is measure for the sinker. And then I'm going to make a figure of eight in the middle of nowhere here, and I'm not going to pull it tight. All right. Okay, so you've got that. You pull it till it makes that little eight, the two loops on both sides, as you can see there. Okay. And that's how you leave that. That goes to your sinker. You've got your hook, had your hook, you've got your hook already tied on with a figure of eight. And what you're going to do, you're going to stick it through the one hole, then through the other. Okay, like that. And then towards your leader, you're going to tie another figure of eight using the hook snoot. So you threw that figure of eight that's on your main line. You tie that one, 
lubricate both, pull them fairly tight, and then pull them onto each other. I've created a bit of a mess. Okay. Right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm first going to pull the hook snoot nice and tight so there's no loops. And then I'm going to pull my main line. And then both. Okay, now that knot will not slip and it will not burn off. Okay, when I refer to finesse, no swivels. So all you're going to have is your bait swinging around on your hook. This goes down, make the loop for your sinker. And then you measure how long you want this trace, all right? And what I would do is, a lot of people now will put a little single swivel here because it's a further away from where everything's happening, all right? No float, no stiff rig, no nothing, no tangle sleeve, absolutely finesse as little knots and swivels and magafters as possible, especially when, you, when it's really clean water. Okay, and then this I would tie straight to my main line using an improved Albright. Okay, so I will use your trace. Uh, your trace, you've got the loop, and then you take your main line through it, you go up three times. Back on itself three times. And then out the exact same way it came in. That's why they refer to it as a improved Albright. The original Albright was different directions and that didn't work well. Or as well. Then you pull it slowly guys. Don't jerk this tag just yet. Only if it makes a loop that it looks like it's going to go over. So you pull the two main ends, the longer ends until it's nice and nice and tight as you can see there and then you take the tag end and you tighten that knot with the tag end cut your tags off and there you have it a very very finesse trace no swivels just the hook dangling i would go smaller than even to a, a a one a size one because if you're fishing finesse you want to do everything lighter smaller thinner uh material meaning you'll fish five oh four five and a smaller hook and there's no swivels no floats no nothing and this will get you more bites guys it's proven so many times we get more bites the more finesse we fish um, but and a lot of times uh, it's not as successful in landing the fish because you've got a thinner, thinner uh, trace material, smaller hook. So remember that you can't pull as hard. So if that fish shoots straight for the rocks, um, you must know your story. And that's another thing. When you go fishing and you're on a spot, you start checking that spot out where you want to pull your fish, how you're going to land your fish beforehand, especially when it comes to bigger fish species. Okay, guys. Well... That concludes uh, whole yun trace, and uh, I just want to remind you guys, fish are responsible. Only keep it if you're going to eat it. A lot of times, you know, you catch a nice fish and, oh, you just want to show everybody at home. That's why we've got cameras, um, cell phones to take photos, because uh, that was an age-old culture of just keeping a fish to show everybody, and then two years later, it's still in the bottom of your freezer. That, that uh, is so sad, especially when it comes to whole yun. So remember to fish responsible. And guys, make sure you subscribe to, to our channel and make sure you like the videos and push that little notification bell to get notified every time we upload videos. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll be loading a lot more content for you guys and tips and tricks. Thank you for watching.